everybody and welcome to this video and in this video we are going to be talking about seven tips i think it was seven i might have to look back but seven tips on um how to cast actors in your no budget to low budget film this is probably for me the make it or break it kind of thing where it comes to your film if your cast is not right especially your leads your film is shit it, it's going to tank and there's not really a whole lot you can do about it um i bet if you were to think of movies you really like there's not going to be too many movies that you love that you're like, oh man, I love that movie, it was so good, but man, that lead actor, what a piece of garbage that motherfucker was. I hated him. Um, you're not gonna have a lot of that. So this is really important in the sense of how people will perceive your film, but even more so in how your shoot is going to go. Now, if you are doing a no budget or low budget feature, or even a short, Time is of the essence, and you can't be wasting a whole lot of it. So it is very, very crucial to make sure you can nail all these things. And in fact, I just came up with another one. Eight. Eight things <laughs> instead of seven. I could probably keep coming up with more, and I'll probably will keep um, doing this over and over again here. But um, so let's let's get to it. Um, First, and this one is so important, um, especially if you don't have a lot of time to shoot and you don't have a lot of money to shoot with. Do you take an actor with more theater experience or an actor with more screen experience? And I will always, always, always go the route of theater experience. The reason is, is because I, I don't have time to feed lines to an actor. I don't have time to make sure, like, they're like, oh, shit, what's my line? You're, you're supposed to say this, and then I'm supposed to say, what? Theater actors are trained to fucking know their lines because they only get one take on stage. And when you don't have enough money to make a movie, you need someone who can go in one take. The next bit about this is, is that theater actors are really good at improv. Stage actors are not good at improv. And usually a lot of times they think they are and they're not. So when I'm talking about improv in this sense, it's when, and th this is where I see um, screen actors get fucked up more than anything, is when... They go, oh, okay, I'm supposed to say the truck is blue, but I don't say that until they say, um, wow, it's really hot outside. If that person doesn't say it's really hot outside, the actor will not know what the fuck to do next. They'll be... And you'll have this weird pause. And that's garbage. You don't want that. So um, a theater actor... If they hear a line that um, isn't their cue or something like that, they could usually come up with an ingenious way to fish for that next line. Or um, just go, well, man, it is so hot, but it's a good thing that truck is blue. Like, they will take it. They, it's just, it's innate in them. Most theater actors take improv classes. So if you're screen actor has taken a lot of improv classes that might help them in this area but not necessarily okay so the problem though with a theater actor compared to a stage actor that you have to be really aware of if you're putting theater actors in your shots is that a theater actor is used to a big fucking stage to act in and what they're not used to is being in a box. And it's probably not as bad now with everyone making fucking selfie videos and fucking reels and whatever the fuck TikToks. Because I think a lot of actors, even if they do a lot of theater, are more familiar with the confines of um, a screen. But um, not so much still. 
because once they get in the flow, they think they can just like move all over the place. So a lot of times if I'm doing like um, close ups or um, tits up uh, or over the shoulder or something like that, and I'm holding the camera or whatever, um, I will usually put my hand out on their back if like I need the back of their head in the frame and I'll just hold them so they know not to fucking move back. Um, it's kind of a silly little thing to do, but it helps keeping them where they need to be. Cause you can say as much as you want. Now I need you to not fucking move. Here's your mark. You fucking stand there. Do not move. They will always try to move, but you know what? They'll always know their fucking lines. And that really at the end of the day is more important for um, making a film move quickly. So next, um, this isn't something that you have to do, but it is something that I like to do just to see. Now, this is during the casting stage. It is nice to have some sort of light source and some sort of camera to see if during their audition they know how to find their light and if they know how to cheat to camera. Because if they do not know how to do this, it is going to take fucking forever to get through your fucking movie. So, um, you set a light up over here and you have the person they're reading with or whatever kind of stand in between the light and them. And then have the camera off to the side here. And see if they go, oh, they're blocking my light. I should do my lines from here. And then cheating to camera is something you do. Like, say this is the camera that I'm looking at right now, but I need to have a conversation with this person here. I'm not going to go like this. Hey, person over here. I'm going to go like this. Hey, person over here. Even though they're right here, I'm looking in this direction. This eye's looking at their farthest eye or their closest eye to the screen. And we're having a conversation like this. And this way, it looks like we're having a conversation, but I'm still cheating to the camera instead of doing this. If the actors you're casting do not know how to do that, you need to go to this next step and see if it works. And this next step, which wasn't going to be the next step, but it's going to be the next step now, is number three, can they take direction? And I was going to use this in a different sense of the word, but this is a good way to do it. So if they are doing this, say, hey, can you cheat to camera, please? And if they do this, then they know how to cheat to camera. If they do this, they don't know how to cheat to camera, okay? If you say, um, find your light, find your light, and they're like, they don't know what that means. So things you can do is say, okay, um, take a quick step to your left. They do it. Um, turn your shoulders to me. They do it. Turn your head a little bit towards me. Now find the other actor with your eyes. And they turn their head a little bit, and that's okay because I went too far. That's, that's good taking direction. Um, another thing you can do to try to see how much the actor trusts you is to go a little farther and say something like, now at the end of this line, I need you to bark like a dog and scratch your head. And if they could, and I'm like, and I'm like, deliver it good. This is important. So they give the line and then they start barking like a dog and scratching their head. And if it looks good, then they're willing to do something stupid. So not that you're going to make them do something stupid in the movie, but the fact that they are an actor and they are willing to take direction is very important because especially with screen actors. Okay. If you tell a screen actor to bark like a dog, they're going to be like, excuse me. Like they get like all indignant and shit. And it's like, look, motherfucker, I just need to know that you can fucking do the job. I I'm on a time crunch here. I'm not going to try to make you look stupid, but you not being able to do what I need you to do is the thing that's going to make you look stupid. You see what I'm saying? So that's another, um, awesome way to do that. This is the next thing we're going to go to. Now this one, it, it really depends on the movie you're making. But if you are going to have beauty makeup on set, then you don't need to really worry about this because the person who's doing makeup for your movie 
we'll take care of it. But if this is a low budget or a no budget movie, most of the time you're going to have the actors do their own makeup. Now, when they come to your audition or whatever, if their makeup is really bad, if their makeup is um, to the point where their face is like 30 shades different from the rest of their body. Um, if the makeup they have on their face makes them look like a caricature of like an eighties punk rocker or something like that. And it just looks ridiculous, but that's how they make themselves up. Um, you need to ask them a question right there and say, Hey, would you be willing to come to set and this is if you have a makeup person on set would you be willing to come to set um with no makeup and have our makeup person take care of you and everything if they say no which i swear to fucking god some do if they say no you can't work with that person because they are going to come looking like they came to your audition now um there are some other actors who will say, um, if you say, I need you to show up to set at X amount of time um, in the morning and I need you to be camera ready, they'll be, fuck that. Like, you need to have hair and makeup there because I can't be camera ready by that time. If that's the case, you don't want to deal with that either if you're on a budget like this and you're on a time crunch like this. And I'm going to let you guess which of these two people are going to be the ones that do that? The theater actors or the state or the screen actors, screen actors. They will want to be pampered with the people doing their hair and makeup and all this other shit. And if there are any actresses out there watching this going, oh, this is really fucked up that he's saying that that's fine. There is a good possibility. I've made more movies than you've been in. So um, we will go with my experience level over yours for this. Um, but if you're not one of those people, God bless you. And please give me a call because, um, finding good actors and actresses, and I'm not just talking like females here, the male actors, they, they can do this too. I've seen actors show up like all fucking weird looking and powdered. And it's just like, Jesus fucking Christ. But, um, there are some actors and actresses out there who think what they do to them themselves is like the best anyone can do. And like, I've been doing this for years. So, you know, you can choke on a bag of dicks if you don't think this is good. And I'm like, get the bag out. Let's fucking do this. Okay. So next, can you get along with them? This is so fucking important. And you hear this a lot and people like kind of poo poo it, but like there are directors out there who won't audition anyone. They'll just take them to lunch or they'll take them out for coffee and just have a conversation with them and see if they can, like, if there's any chemistry between them as people. Because if you don't have that, them taking direction from you or them trusting you enough to take direction from you is fucking like pulling teeth. You have to be able to, like, connect with them on just even a fucking personal level of any kind. If you cannot have a conversation with your actor or actress, there's a good possibility that they are going to tank this project. And it's not because they want to. They think that they're God's gift and they want this to be amazing. So chances are they're, it, it's going to be very, very difficult. So if you cannot... So I, what I would say is if you did a round of auditions... On your second round of auditions, have that be just going out for coffee with each one of them individually. And um, the people who pass that test, you could take them to round three, okay? And then you could just call round two an, a non-round and you just like did what you did. So next, this is a good one too. Asking the actors that you've already cast in the movie. So say like you have two leads in the movie. Um, one of them is the male lead, let's say, and you've already cast the male lead. Instead of auditioning 30 freaking women for the female lead in this, ask your actor like, hey, is there anyone you've worked with that you have super fucking good chemistry with that like you guys just clicked and it just seems so natural? 
because guaranteed they're going to have at least one person that they're going to go, oh, yeah, like I click really well with so and so. Now, if you have a good rapport with this one actor and this one actor has a good rapport with this one actress, chances are you can have a really good rapport with that actress. And especially if the one actor trusts you already and they could like put in good words for you and then everything just starts working together so beautifully, so seamlessly. It's really, really, really good. So at that point, like say there's like two or three different actors or actresses that they say they have really good chemistry with. Bring them in, have them do a scene together and just read it a couple times, a couple different ways. Um, if you want to have fun with it, flip the script, have them like read this one, reads this one's part and this one reads this one's part just to kind of like ease the tension up a little bit and just see how it goes. And if it's good, then that's a really easy way to move this. And hopefully all the other things we've talked about are things that they've already taken care of because I've been burned on that one too. Okay. Next, see if they can hold a pose. Now, I don't mean, like, hold a pose and strike and, like, go. I mean, like, tell them to act the scene out. Okay? So they're acting the scene out. And at the end of the scene, the woman is supposed to go, and damn you for doing that. Okay? Have them do it again. And this time, kind of come at it from a different angle. Like, stand at a different angle or take a camera and put it at a different angle. And have them do that. And, that's, and have her do the line again. Damn you for doing that. If her hands and her face like move in the same way and end up in the same way in post when you're editing this movie, this is going to be a breeze to edit because the cuts are going to seem flawless and it's going to seem like your editor is a fucking genius. But... More times than not, what you're going to have is an actor going, and damn you for doing that. And then the next time they do it, they'll go, and you know what? Damn you for doing that. And you're like, okay, well, you just did something completely different. So I can't cut those two things together. So why don't you try doing it again the same way? And then see if you can kind of coax them into doing that thing the same way. And if you can, then again, they are very moldable, pliable actors, and you will be able to make editing and post-production so much easier. Like, I'm telling you, seriously, this will cut days, days off of your edit if you can make sure your actors do the same motions and keep the same poses for each time they're running a line or running a scene. Everything they say, they should know what their body's doing the whole time. So really, really push into that with your actors. And when you're like going over stuff with them, and if you're going to do rehearsals beforehand, really lean into that. I need to know where your hands are at all times. I need to know what your head's going to be doing at all times. I need to know what faces you make when you say these kinds of lines. Because when we're cutting back and forth, it will be so easy to do that. So that's just like, I, I love actors who can fucking do that. It makes my job really easy. It makes post job really easy. And the last one here, I don't even know what number we're on anymore. Maybe it's eight. Maybe it's 13. I don't know. But this is something that happens every fucking time I do a casting for a movie or have done a casting for a movie. You get somebody <clears throat> who comes in and they come in with some ridiculous resume and they come in with their held, head held high, the whole fucking thing. And then somehow or another, whether it is before the audition or after the audition, they kind of lay in to the idea that they know somebody who can help. They know somebody who could get the movie distribution. They know somebody at this place. They're sleeping with someone over here. They're the mistress of this dude at this place that can help blankety, blankety, blank, blank, blank. Now, every fucking time somebody fucking comes in and says that shit, and then you put that person in your movie... 
I would say it would be more than 9 out of 10. It would be like 99.99 out of 100. They have no pull. And everything they said to you was bullshit. And the best way to judge this, the best way to judge this, is just think to yourself, if this person's really sucking this dude's dick, why the fuck are they auditioning for my movie? Because I ain't got shit. So anyway, that's a really good indicator. Now, I'm not trying to sell you short, but um, really think about it. Like, why would someone be trying to get into your no-budget or low-budget movie if they have all the hookups that they say they have. One thing you can do is try to verify this information with anybody, especially if you know some of the people that they say they know. Another thing, if you're doing social media, check their social media and see if this person that they're talking about is liking their posts or anything like that. But the only time I would recommend putting someone who might not be the best into a movie of yours to do it. And this is like discretion advised, dude, is if they're coming with money. If they say, yeah, if you put me in this movie, um, I could bring like 10,000 or 20,000 to the table or something like that. And you guys might be thinking to yourself, that doesn't happen. Dude, that fucking happens all the time. Like I would not have made the half the movies I've made if there wasn't like an actor out there who wants a producer credit, who's willing to throw some money in to make sure they get a role that is a good enough role for their reel and um, a good enough role for IMDb and all that other jazz. So um, those are some quick little tidbits on how to cast. There will probably be more. Um, I could do this all day. Like, this is like um, pre-production is like um, kind of get off time for me. It's it's really fun and really easy. So um, yeah, so let me know what you think down below. If you have any filmmaking questions or anything like that, pre-production, post-production, um, filming, like I think that is called production, um, let me know down below and I will see what I can do to answer that question for you. So until next time, I will talk to you guys later. Join this page. And I'll see you later. Bye.